Hey there guys, in this build video we're going to be looking at Cora, uh, Warframe's resident beastmaster. I want to see how I've built her, her pet, how you build her companions to go with her, and how I set up my uh, melee weapon to work as a stat stick. So uh, yeah, hopefully after this one you'll find that of Cora is well worth the effort of getting her, as she is quite the headache uh, and a lot of effort to try and farm for. Okay, well now we're going to talk about the abilities of Korra. The first is her passive. Her passive basically allows her to get Venari to fight with her, and when Venari is out and active, it provides a slight speed boost for Korra. It also revives Venari, should Venari be defeated in any way or just goes down. The first ability for Korra is Whipclaw. And this is just a nice quick attack that sends a group of enemies reeling at where the Retuel is. It also pairs quite well with the ability too, which is Ensnare. Ensnare captures an enemy, but it also pulls the enemies around it, rendering them unable to move, unable to attack is quite good as a CC ability. If you use Whip Claw in this ability, it actually doubles the amount of damage it does. It's a very nice combo to do together. The third ability is actually being able to command Venari. You can have it into a attack stance, a healing stance, or a defensive stance. The healing stance you can actually target with a reticule and Venari will then heal it. You can also have Venari heal itself, uh, where it will just stand still basically. It costs about 25 energy to switch between each one at default. The final ability is Strangle Dome. A strangle Dome is basically a field that sucks in any enemies that are in it. It also holds them and also changes the aggro for each of the enemies. So enemies outside of the Strangle Dome will then be forced to attack those that are hanging around the outside of it. If you were to ensnare an enemy, that enemy that is then drawn into the Strangle Dome if they're close by to it and added to it. You can also use Whip Claw, which gives 50% of the damage done to the enemy that has been hit while in Strangle Dome to all the other ones affected by it. So Cora's kit is one that's been made very well. Everything seems to flow into each other, which is quite nice. With the ability to have healing by Venari as well, it kind of offsets the need for a rejuvenation. Or other abilities like Life Strike or Healing Return. Another thing that we're going to look into now as we head into the abilities of Venari is something else that will offset the need for healing. Okay, so now we're going to be looking into how I built Korra. So originally I had two builds to show off, but after playing through with them, I found that the Umbra build just performed the best for my playstyle. So I'm just going to show, walk you through that one. If you have... Or well, if you don't have the uh, Umbra mods yet, what you can do is just use the standard equivalent. So, you know, Vitality, Steel Fiber, Intensify. It'll be the same sort of thing, just obviously you won't get the set bonuses. So let's walk through the abilities now. So we have Steel Charge to give us more melee damage, which is something that we'll use a lot because we use Whip Claw. Right now I have Handspring uh, equipped in there. We're going to use uh, Umbral Vitality for health, Streamline for a bit of efficiency, Hunter Adrenaline to give us energy when we get hit, let it resolve for more health, transient fortitude for more power strength, organ message for putting our duration back, we have umbral intensify for power strength and umbral fiber. So altogether you do get the set bonus from all the umbral mods and that's just how my setup is. Okay, so here we have Venari. We can see we've put four former in her, so we've got a Hunter Recovery to give us some lifesteal link. We've got Maul for melee damage. We have Link Health to give Venari some more health. Uh, we're using Animal Instinct for that uh, loot radar. We're using Pack Leader so that melee strikes will heal Venari. We use Swipe um, so that it will attack four times. Uh, Sharpen Claws is just there to remove enemy armor, which is very useful at higher levels. Link Armor is to give Venari more armor. Bite for crit damage and crit chance and then uh, Hunter Command because we do quite a lot of slashes with um, our static melee weapon um, to get it to just attack particular targets. Okay now we're just going to take a quick look into how we've modded our companion. For this one I'm using my uh, Smita Kavat just so we can get the crit bonuses that also help with just using our abilities. So looking at it to start with we have Bite, that's to up our crit chance and crit damage. We have Link Health for more health, Maul, Swipe, Pack Leader for health regen, uh, Mischief is still there so it doesn't get hit, Hunter Recovery, Sharpen Claws, Link Armor, and then finally Charm to increase our crit chance. So the way that the uh, companion works in addition to Venari is while they're off meleeing things, they heal you. Uh, when you use your ability one or melee, you heal them, and it's sort of like a symbiotic relationship where you just keep giving each other health. It's just really good, and I really enjoy this playstyle. 
I can have the freedom to use different um, guns or whatever going to any mission type uh, up to probably about level 100. I've taken this to sorties and it's been perfectly fine. And I've been okay. Uh, if you're using something with more health, you can switch the Smita Kavat to uh, one of the Chargers or the Kubros and you'll be fine. And finally, we're just going to take a quick look at the weapon we're using as our stat stick. So the stance doesn't matter as long as you just have one for the right polarity that gives you a rich amount of points. So going through, we have a pressure point for just extra damage, north wind for uh, ice damage, we've got spoil strike for just more damage, organ chatter for crit damage, we have prime fever strike to turn the cold damage into viral, uh, true steel for additional crit chance. Uh, that stacks with our ability 1. We have Drifting Contact for just a bit more status chance and uh, additional time on our combo counter, which ability 1 also uses. And then finally we have Gladiator Might for just a bit more crit damage and also pairing with other Gladiator mods so that we can have our crit chance go up with our combo counter. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that's pretty much everything I have for Korra. I really enjoy her, she's slowly becoming just my favourite Warframe, just, just run around and do certain things with. Uh, you've always kind of got a team on your side, even when you're playing solo, with the mix of your companion and Venari. The just heals that you get from this build makes soloing and even survivals just way more enjoyable. You can just play around and not have to worry so much. You will go down in high levels if you don't pay attention to your health and you don't melee things. But for the most part, you are generally okay, as long as you use your abilities, you shouldn't have any issues.